Welcome back to the channel guys. Today I want to talk to you about something that gets me very jazzed up and that is smart home technology. Now I bought my first home nearly three years ago and one of the things I was most excited about was the ability to now permanently modify the home to be more smart. So in this video I want to showcase some of the devices I have deployed around my home and how I use them. Now, this isn't an exhaustive list as my house is ever evolving, but it does capture the operative information in case you find something that you'd like to replicate. Also note that this is not a formal review of any one product, but more a touch on how everything works together cohesively in my home to provide convenience. Now, I had originally intended on presenting this video almost like a day in the life video, but decided to structure it by grouping like devices into sections of video, allowing you to skip around to the parts that you find most useful or interesting. Check the description for timestamps. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start off with the brains of the operation. And this part is twofold. Firstly, this is an Alexa household for no reason other than the fact that it has historically been the smartest voice agent available for use. Overall, I've been happy with the experience with Alexa with one minor gripe. Given that I have an Alexa device in nearly every room of my house, I find that when trying to activate one in one room, it can oftentimes activate more than one and get confused with which one I'm trying to use. For instance, if I want the one in my bathroom to start playing music, a significant amount of the time, the one in the master bedroom will pick up on the audio command and begin playing in there. It's a minor frustration, but it's there nonetheless. The other half of the brains in this house comes in the form of a Samsung SmartThings V2 hub. Now this is a Z-Wave slash Zigbee smart hub that manages nearly all of my smart home devices. I feel that a smart hub is really a necessity for any smart home for more than a few reasons, but we'll get into some of those later on in this video. Next, let's talk about the smart home devices that have given me the most convenience value for cost and effort. Smart light switches. This is really where I started my smart home venture a few years back. I've been a big fan of the GE and Brighton line of Z-Wave switches. After installation, these allow me to easily manage the lights via a the iPhone app or automations. They come in a variety of functionalities and designs allowing for binary on off, dimming functionality, Z-Wave repeating, and etc. I'll advise you to have an electrician install these if you're interested, but wanted to also share that installation has gotten a lot easier. I have in front of me the new version of these switches with simple wire technology, which means you no longer have to figure out which two lines coming from the wall are line and load. Um, you can plug either into either of these sockets on the back of the smart switch and the switch itself will figure it out. When I first deployed these in my home a couple years ago, that wasn't the case and so I, as I slowly continue replacing the non-essential switches over time, it's gotten much easier and much faster. While deploying these may not seem all that enticing, automations are really what I'm trying to track closer and closer to so I have a house that knows and learns my behavior and does what I need without me having to think about it. And these switches will be critical in that endeavor. More on these when we get into automations later in the video. Next, we have your standard issue smart plugs. Now, I don't have a ton of these around the house simply because I feel like deploying these is skating to where the puck is at instead of where it's going. That said, I have found use in smart plugs for those few devices I have that do have a binary on off switch and benefit from automations. For example, my coffee maker, uh, my master bathroom heater, my shop lights, and my kitchen air freshener. In fact, I retired my Keurig for a dumb Amazon Basics coffee maker so I could get this smart functionality uh, because simply I needed a coffee maker that had an on off button that actually opened the current um, and turned it off. More on these devices later once we get into automations. Let's talk about the auxiliary smart home devices I have deployed around my home. Most often used is my smart thermostat. This is an Ecobee V4 with a built-in. Of course, the Nest has been the juggernaut of the smart home sector for a while, but I committed to Ecobee primarily for the broader wealth of options and also to avoid the Google ecosystem. This device was relatively easy to install and I do enjoy the fact that I can passcode secure it so no one else can touch the thermostat. Dads, take note. Next, we have the Ratio 3 smart sprinkler system. Now I did a more extensive video on this earlier this year showing the installation and configuration so if that's something you're interested in, hit the iCard or check the link in the description for that video. While this may not be the most glamorous smart home product, it's certainly one that solves a problem and has a need. The old Hunter Sprinkler controller that came with my home 
was so dated and antiquated, I had to check the manual anytime I wanted to make a change to my watering. Those days are long gone now. The Rachio 3 allows me to manually initiate watering via the app, Alexa, or even physically on the device itself. It has smart skip for things like incoming rain or oversaturation of the soil and provides valuable metrics on your water consumption throughout the year. It makes watering and managing a yard as easy as it should be. Now, I've coupled the next few devices into what I'll call securing the fort, and that comes in the form of smart locks for the front and back door, as well as smart garage door devices for both of my garage and a couple other devices. For the doors, the locks deployed are Schlage Connect touchscreen deadbolts that tie into my Z-Wave network to allow for automations, as well as remote opening and closing. For the garages, I have two Go Control Z-Wave garage door controllers that offer the same app and automation based opening and closing of the garage doors. Next, we have Z-Wave smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. As the batteries die in the smoke detectors around my house, instead of replacing the batteries, I've taken to just replace the smoke detector entirely with these first alert carbon monoxide and smoke detectors. These Z-Wave devices not only sound off at the detection of smoke or carbon monoxide, just as a traditional smoke detector would, they also send an alert to my phone that something was detected. What got me really interested in these is when I was looking at the reviews on Amazon, someone gave a review reflecting that these devices had saved his home. He had a smart home much like mine and his house caught fire while he was away on business. He got an alert for the smoke and upon checking his internal security cameras, saw a small fire starting. He was able to call the fire department and remotely save his home and his belongings. So I was hugely interested um, and at this point I've replaced about 40% of the smoke detectors in my own home with of course more to come. Lastly, we have water sensors. If you have a sump pump in your home pumping out water from your foundation, at some point it will fail. Now mine hasn't failed but I decided to try to get ahead of the hassle and I placed a water sensor below my hot water heater and about 10 feet away from my sump pump to alert me if water is detected. This sensor sits just a few millimeters off the ground and has underside contacts that allow it to quickly report when water is detected. It also has contacts on the top to detect dripping as well, which is why it's under my water heater tab. Now as an addendum, uh, I do have external ring cameras, uh, ring doorbell, and a few internal Wise and Eufy cameras uh, that I'm still trying to find an all-inclusive security camera replacement system for. Uh, so I haven't included those in this video, but potentially more to come on those later. Now, I have a Sense Smart Home Energy Monitor deployed. Uh, right now, I struggle to recommend this device as I feel that it hasn't held up to the expectations that the product set. Uh, this device is supposed to be able to recognize electrical signals in your home and identify the product and how much power it's using. I was very excited by that idea as I thought it'd be interesting to see which devices in my home were uh, power vampires constantly sucking up juice when not in use. In reality, I have less than 30 devices that have been recognized in almost two years of use in this device. Um, and many of them are things like Motor 2 or Heat 1 and three entries for dryer. So not a lot of value there. Now I've contacted Sense for support and their support team was stellar, but I'm still left feeling disappointed even after connecting with them. At this point, I check Sense every now and then to review the total power consumption over time Ultimately, however, I'm interested in the metrics it's able to provide once I have solar panels installed on my house next month, as it does support measuring power produced with these two included clamps. If that video interests you, don't forget to sub on the way out so you don't miss it. Let's get into the real value of having all of this stuff to put in your home, and that is automations. Again, most of the bang for my buck and convenience return has come from these smart switches. For many of my light systems, there are multiple switches and you'll find a plethora of three to four gain switch boxes throughout my house. I found it frustrating to enter a space and toggle multiple switches as you try to figure out which one goes to the lights you're interested in. To me, it makes a lot more sense to walk into a common area and just tell Alexa, turn on these lights, or better yet, have it automatically detect you and switch those lights on. For example, in my home, as you open the basement door, there's a motion sensor that turns on the four different light circuits in the basement as you walk down the stairs so you're not left fumbling around to find the appropriate switch. If you're ready to watch a movie and want to cut the lights, don't worry, there's an automation for that. Netflix and chill. And there's even one for watching TV or movies in the living room upstairs. Movie time.
I also have multiple door sensors throughout the house and multiple points of egress that toggle on certain lights to ensure there's always light when you walk in the door, even if your hands are full. There's one on the front door, there's one on the garage door, and even one on the garage door. And in the interest of saving power, for any light that automatically turns on from a point of egress automation, it turns itself off 10 minutes later to ensure I'm not wasting juice for no reason. Speaking of wasting juice, the Ecobee 4 thermostat helps me save money with its Eco Plus functionality that helps to learn how I like to cool and heat my house and find money saving opportunities along the way. I've also deployed a handful of the motion sensors to allow for the follow me functionality to ensure it's only cooling or heating based on the occupancy of certain rooms. And when I say good night, the Ecobee sets its heating down to 65 degrees, as well as some other automations like shutting off certain light systems, alerting me if doors are unlocked or if the garage was left open, and toggling off the smart plugs. Now 65 degrees is cold, but I love sleeping in the cold. What I don't love is getting out of a warm bed in the morning to brush my teeth in the cold. That's why I have a small space heater hooked up to a Zeus Zen 15 high amperage smart plug. This plug is specifically built for high load appliances like fridges, heaters, sump pups, etc. And it turns on every day 15 minutes before I wake up to heat my bathroom. So I wake up from a warm bed and head into a warm bathroom. At the same time, I also have another smart plug hooked up to my coffee maker as well as an air freshener in the kitchen. The coffee maker is preloaded with grinds the day before and automatically turns on 15 minutes before I wake up so that coffee is made by the time I walk downstairs. The air freshener is set on an automation timer so that it turns on for 90 minutes during peak activity times in the kitchen. Another convenient automation is the one on my garage doors. Based on the location of my device, as I get closer to home, the garage begins opening while I'm down the street and is open by the time I pull up. So no more dealing with those antiquated clickers or the dead batteries that those come with. I have another automation on both the front and the back door that detects when the door sensor closes and proceeds to lock the door automatically. So no more worrying if you forgot to lock the door when you left the house, but if you wanted to be extra sure, you can always check your SmartThings app. So that's my smart home in a nutshell. As mentioned, it's ever evolving and I didn't showcase everything uh, because I didn't want to make this video too long. So I may make an update video down the road if there's interest as an addendum to the content in this video. If I could share one piece of advice with anyone who's thinking of setting up their own smart home, it would be to avoid Wi-Fi devices or those that have does not require a hub as a selling point. With many of those, you'll end up with a plethora of apps, accounts, integrations, and Wi-Fi congestion. So spend a little time learning and then go the route of Z-Wave or Zigbee. So that's all I have for you guys today. Links in the description for all the products showcased here. If you have any comments, questions, or tips for me even, drop them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.